So um, someone asked about this question. So here we go. Blacktop Speedway is a supplier of automotive parts. Doesn't matter. Included in stock are seven speedometers that are correctly calibrated. So seven correctly calibrated. And two that are not. If X represents the number that are not calibrated. So in other words, if I'm looking to find out what the probability of one, of drawing one out of those nine that's not calibrated, that would be the probability of X equals one. Or you could say that the probability of X for X equals one. That's what we'd be looking for. So. The question, the first, the question they ask us to build out this frequency uh, probability distribution table based on the probability of getting no zero of the two. So I'm, I'm going to draw three randomly, and what's the probability of getting three good speedometers out of these seven and these two? So a total of nine. So what's the probability of getting zero uh, poorly calibrated or not calibrated um, speedometers. So what's the probability of, we're drawing three times, three speedometers are randomly selected without replacement. Three without replacement. So I have to kind of, you could build a tree, you could do a whole bunch of different things, but I'm gonna tell you that I'm gonna look at it this way. So what's the probability of, what's the probability of drawing zero on the first. Well, that would be any of my seven out of nine. Okay? That's my first draw. But because it's without replacement, what's the probability? And let's put a little subscript one here. On the second draw, what's the probability of drawing zero um, faulty or poorly calibrated speedometers? Well, I no longer have nine because it's without replacement. I no longer have seven. I have six because I pulled one of the good ones out the first time and I only have a total of eight, okay? And so what's the probability on the third draw to get only good speedometers? Well, I only have five good ones left out of a total of seven. So what's the probability of zero on three draws? Well, that's the product rule that's the product of these three probabilities. Now, if we want to simplify our work a little bit, these sevens, quote, cancel, they equal one. Three goes into six twice, three goes into nine three times. So I'm just simplifying my fraction. So the probability of zero is gonna be two times five over three times eight, which is 10 over 24, which since the, uh, since the software wants four decimal places, we're gonna to have to divide this. So 10 divided by 24, we get 10 divided by 24, and we get 0 0.4167, 0 0.4167, or I have a 40, approximately 42% chance of getting three good ones in a row on, the th on three draws. So, 0.4167. What's the probability of just drawing one? Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's do it two different ways. Let's say on the first draw, I draw one, and I want just the probability of drawing one. So that's going to be um, two out of nine probability of on the second draw of not drawing, probability on the third draw of not drawing. So that's going to be uh, seven out of eight and six out of seven. So when I multiply those, I get two times nine or two nines times seven eighths times six sevenths. Sevens cancel. Two goes into this once, two goes into that four times. Three goes into that twice, three goes into that three times, and I get one times two over three times four, which is two twelfths, 
which is one sixth. Okay. But that's not the only combination, right? Because one sixth, one divided by six, is point one six 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 six. Okay. What's the probability? What what if the combination was this? I get zero on the first, one on the second, and zero on the third. So this would have been. Uh, zero would have been, what's the probability? Seven ninths. What's the probability of drawing the one? That would be two eighths. What's the probability of drawing the zero? That would have been uh, six sevenths. So the probability of drawing one on the second draw is seven ninths times two eighths times six sevenths, which is, notice how it's the same math, right? Two, three, one, four, and so I get 2 over 12, which is 1 sixth. But we have the third case, right? And of course, since we just did that, probability of on the third draw, on the second draw, on the first draw is still 1 sixth. So what's 1 sixth plus 1 sixth plus 1 sixth is 3 sixths, which is 50%. because it could come in any of those combinations. Okay? I just don't know when it was when it's going to show up there in terms of it's going to be on the first draw, the second draw, the third draw. And then what's the probability of drawing 2? So really I'm going to look at probability of 1 1 0 plus the probability of 1 0, 1, plus the probability of 0, 1, 1. So let's figure out what's the probability of 1, which is, uh, what is it, 2 out of 9. What's the probability of drawing a second one right in a row? Well, that's going to be 1 out of 8. And the probability of 0 is going to be the remaining 7 out of 7, which is 100%, of course. So that's just multiplying times 1, so our overall probability is going to be of 2 in the first two draws. I don't know how to note that. I guess I could make something up. 2 ninths times 1 eighth, which is 1 is 36th. And I believe what we'll find is this one is going to be um, 2 ninths. This one's going to be um, 7 eighths and this one's going to be one seventh but here your sevens are going to cancel and you're left with two ninths times one eighth you're going to get the same thing so the three of those situations added together are 136 plus 136 plus 136 which is 336 which is 1 12th and what's 1 divided by 12 1 divided by 12 is point zero eight three three. 0 0.0833. Now, there's an easier way to do that. Um, I'll show you that in a second. What's the probability of me drawing three, three defective speedometers out of my three draws? Well, there's only two of them. So the probability of drawing three bad ones is actually zero. So there's the answer zero. The answer is zero there. So that means we must know that these three options add up to one. They have to. So if we have faith in our answer of 0.5 and we have faith in that, we would really didn't have to calculate this one. We could have taken these two, added them together, and subtracted them from one. But I'll show you that those are the correct answers. So when they say find the mean of this probability distribution, you need to go back and take a look at the text. But really, they're talking about... Um, We kind of already did this earlier, I think, unless it was last semester in a different course altogether, in a different school altogether. So really what you're doing is you're taking the zero, um, the occurrences in X, and you're multiplying it times the probability of that occurring. And then you're adding it to 1 times 0.5. 
and then you're adding that to 2 times 0 0.0833 and then um, that equals 0 plus 0.5 plus 2 times that uh, whatever that is uh, 0.1666 repeating and so we get 0.66 repeating and since they're asking for it in, uh, they didn't actually specify, I'm gonna stick with the four decimal places here, report possible probabilities accurate to four decimal places. So I'm gonna type in 0.6667 and hit submit. And they're telling me it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Uh, because they're rounding. Um, I'm not sure why they would round to one decimal place, 0.7. Um, I can check my math. Uh, 0.41, oh, it could be, no, because 0.4167 times 0 is 0. So I get 0.5 plus, oh, that could be y, plus 0.8, no, that's not that actually, 0 0.08, it could be because I cut this off, right? Let's see what happens when I do that. Times, what is it, 2? I still get that, right? Of course, because I just did that before. Um, so, not liking how this person wrote the question, but clearly they want you to put 0.7 in there. Uh, you're not gonna know that, so when you get to this question, run it at um, round it to one decimal place, I guess. Uh, I don't know what happens when we change the numbers. Uh, we could get a new version. Um, six speedometers instead of two. So we can quickly, I guess we can quickly do this. This is going to be um, is it still 2? So that's going to be um, 4 out of 6, 7, 8. It's going to be 6 out of 8 times 5 out of 7 times 4 out of 6. That's 4 goes into that. 2 times 4 goes into that once, so we get 5 times 1 over 2 times 7, which is 5 over 14. Point three five seven, Yes. And then P of 1 is going to be, uh, let's say I draw the first one, so that's a 2 out of 6. Times now this is just one version if I draw it first right and then drawing the second is going to be six out of This should be an eight six out of seven and times five out of six Okay, so here we go again six and six This is one fourth so I get five times one which is five and four times seven which is twenty eight but remember, this happens in three different combinations, so it's five, to, oh, 5 over 28 um, added three times, right? Or multiplied times three. So I get 15 out of 28. So 15 divided by 28 is a little more than half. And we get that. Okay? And then the second situation is P of 2. Uh, but again, I can get three different situations, right? If I go first draw, second draw, not on the third draw, first, third, not on the second, and not on the first, but second and third, right? But they all, as we saw when I worked it out before, we get this going on. Um, let's draw it in the first two, then we're going to multiply it times three. So draw it on the first one, it's going to be two out of eight times one out of seven, and then... Six out of six, 100% chance of getting a non because we drew the two uh, broken ones, whatever. So that's the number one. This is the number one fourth. And so we're getting one over 28. But remember, that's three different things. So we're adding 128th, the addition rule, 128 three times. And so I get um, three out of three over 28, which is. 3 divided by 28, 107. And so we get that. Again, we could have just taken these two numbers, added them together, and subtracted them from 1 because we know that this one is 0. There's zero chance of us getting three broken, non-calibrated uh, 
non-calibrated um, speedometers. Now, to find the mean, that was the reason why we did this one again, is take zero and multiply it times 0 0.3571, but of course that's the number zero. Add that to one times 0 0.5357, and of course that's 0 0.5357, and then add that to two times 0 0.1071, which is 0.2142. So this adds up to be point, uh, yeah, we're going to be okay. 7499. So now I'm wondering, are they going to ask for 0 0.75? We'll see. 0 0.8. Somehow they're rounding up in a crazy, stranger, stranger old way. What is going on there? Yeah, it looks like they're just rounding to the nearest. Yeah, this doesn't round to 0.8. Appropriate rounding rules apply. Well, that doesn't round to 0.8. So I don't know. I don't know. Unless we go back to the original fractions. What were the original fractions? 3571. That's 5 fourteenths. But that's being multiplied times 0. Plus 15 28ths. times 1 plus 3 28 times 2. So that's 0. I get 15 28 plus 6 28 which is 21 28 which is 0.75 which I guess rounds to 0 0.8. That's annoying as all hell. Whoever wrote this is annoying as hell. Um, I guess that's it for the video, though.